Anyway, I want to talk a bit today about public engagement. And public engagement is really about educating the public about our research findings. And to do that, we need to, to create channels to promote this dialogue and hopefully give some form of transparency to the work that you uh, and government and the charities fund. Now, what is our uh, public engagement and our role, uh, how we meet uh, MSs? It works at many different levels. At some levels, it's from a per personal perspective, and people are touched in the lab by people with MS. We also have a professional perspective, so we meet and treat uh, MSs uh, every week, and MSs are vital to our, some of our clinical research. But we also do other things which are kind of outside the box, and we have a panel of uh, what we call them expert MSs, and they teach on courses to all our students, and we also run pharma, uh, courses for the pharmaceutical companies, so people actually get to meet people with MS, and they can teach uh, MS from a personal perspective. We also do uh, public things, and today we're very thankful and grateful for you to come along to the research day. There's one here, there's, uh, the UCL will be also holding one later on in the year. We do other things, we occasionally, if you want, uh, to come into the lab, you can contact one of us. Uh, we often go for talks, either at national or international uh, or local meetings. And we have school visits. And in fact, school trips are integral to our, our lab. In fact, we have a, a thing called the center of the cell, which is this orangey blob thing. And we get between 20 to 30,000 school kids a year to come and talk about science. And this hairy hedgehog here is the next uh, big adventure which is a, a neuron, so we're actually going to uh, investigate uh, more about neuroscience as a teaching exercise, an education <laughs> exercise. Now we do other things as well, we do a bit of media work, and some of that is really tracking down the BBC to make sure that the, the stories that they're actually saying are actually physically correct, because many times they don't, and we've had the pleasure of, of pulling a few uh, posts from the BBC down. But we do other things, we do a shift work, we work with shift MS, we do artwork, this is some uh, thing from a, an art gallery in Dublin. As you've seen outside, we also do some needle work with the Charcot Tapestry. We do book work, this is a book written by Sandra and Hans, it's all about uh, MS for people with MS, so uh, you can get a copy if you want. And we also do charity work, so this year as part of our give backs uh, process, we've raised about £20,000 for people with multiple sclerosis. But what I want to, to talk to you today about is our research blog. And many of you may be uh, converts, but because it's a, a new day um, with our friends at UCL, many of you might not be familiar with this. This is a blog that we run uh, every day. It's for people with MS and their families, and it's to try and give and interpret good, bad, and other news. And this uh, occurs every day. This is a type of post, so uh, we'll get the, the science, and then we'll get probably uh, uh, an interpretation, and there's a comment. So in this case, it was a comment from the public saying really why this study wasn't of any value. Now, we also allow uh, Q&A capabilities, so we get some um, good posts, we get some bad posts, but we do try to allow them to be anonymous, which allows um, other things to come. So we will be apparently reincarnated as toilet rolls. So, um, we are scientists and we don't really, haven't evolved the capacity to uh, interact with giving bad news and we haven't evolved the thick skin that neurologists have. So, uh, obviously, you know, it can be personal at times. And who are these people? Well, as with many graffiti artists, they leave their names and it's quite clear that these are trolls from toilet rolls. So, the, um, the blog had humble beginnings. It was the idea of Prof G, Professor Giovanoni. He had a following for a little while. It was really probably just his mum, you know. Um, and after a few years, it, it only got to about a thousand. And then he had the good fortune of having a skiing accident. He actually fell over and he broke his clavicle, probably. And uh, from that time, he decided he would be blogging every day. And with the more posts you get, the more visits you get. And, hit, and in collaboration with uh, Shift MS, he tried to get everybody in the lab to learn how to blog, including myself. 
And uh, he was going on holiday and he just kind of pushed me into the thing and said, well, you can do it. But he didn't actually tell me that just before he'd, he'd upped it to two, two, two posts. And I'd never blocked before, so I had no idea. So it was two posts every day. And in uh, June, the mouse doctors were born. So these are uh, some of the people in the lab who can talk about animal work with a bit of impunity. And in um, June 2012, um, Prof G learned a new form of social media. He decided not to Twitter about his, or tweet about his hemorrhoids and decided to talk about science. And you can see we've had a, a real boom. And at the moment, we're getting about 80 to 90,000 hits a month. We're getting over 3,500 visits a day. So uh, it's really taking off. Now, what are the advantages? Well, hopefully, for you, it's an information source. For us, it's a way of answering questions, so Prof doesn't have to answer the same question to every single patient. It's a way of getting news to you. It's a way of advertising potential trials that may be of value to you. It also gives us a tool to quickly respond to the media and also pharma. I mean, the media have a very bad habit of creating these false impressions, and it's important that we can uh, temper them. For my personal opinion, I was getting very lazy, so I needed to do some reading, and that's what was my motivation. And with uh, more reading, you become more educated. And it's a two-way process. I'm learning about uh, MS as you're, uh, I'm trying to educate you about MS as well. And that uh, gives uh, data and research ideas. We've actually had some really good ideas from you guys. And uh, that can then lead into publications and uh, also research grants. I think you've heard about the Proximus trial, which uh, we wouldn't have got without the help of the blog, and in fact, you guys named it, so you know you can part own it. Now, obviously, it has its downside. It does take a significant amount of time, so I've learned to be sleep deprived. And obviously, if you put your neck on the block, then you find the people who want to chop it off. So that comes with the territory. So, what have I been doing in the last few years? Now, one of the things I did when I came here was to try and talk to you about the drug development process and why does it take so long to get a drug uh, from the bedside to the, to, I'm sorry, the bench to the bedside. And I came up with this idea of a, 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 a sort of a game. It's like a monopoly board and the further you go round, the more it costs. But it's a bit like a snakes and ladders game. There's a few ladders helping you, but there's a lot of snakes taking you back. And if you have a new drug, you have to do testing, so you test it in uh, animals to show it's safe. Then you go into phase one, which is at the top, to show it's safe in health individuals. Then you go to people with MS and show it's safe and it works. Then you do a bigger trial and show it works, and then you have to go to the regulators. And for the pharmaceutical companies to do that, it costs about $380 million. So this is my drug that we invented in 2002. And I came to you in 2011 to say, this is where we are. So what I want to do today is come and tell you where is our progress. Well, in fact, we've just gone that far. We've gone three spaces in two years. Terrible, terribly slow. The drug is safe as houses, which is very good. But to do that, with the monopoly analogy, we've had to put lots and lots of houses. It's very been expensive. And we're doing it on the cheap. Uh, we have, I think, uh, generated enough um, uh, money probably to take us to a first uh, man trials, hopefully starting in summer of this year. And then we'll know if we've got a drug that's ready for MS or a drug that will take us back to the drawing board. But I just show you is that this is a very, very slow process and that's part of the reason why it is this, there is slow progress in getting drugs to people with MS. So, to go for the phase three uh, trial for progressive MS, it may take seven years. Three years to do the, the trial, and uh, two years to recruit, and another two years to analyze the data. So, you, you know, even at 2014, we're still a long way to go. So, we try and use that to try and temper the expectations, because unfortunately, it is a slow process, and that's one of our function, is to educate that. So, I thank you. Uh, just to remind you, the uh, address of the blog is www.res.org, and if you want a card, there is some uh, over there, and thank you.